Is Jesus Christ the Father? Is Jesus Christ the Father? And, you know, some teach that the three members of the Godhead, and Paul used the word Godhead three times, and we use the word Trinity. That's what we're talking about, the Godhead. There's one God in three persons. But there are those that say, even among Bible-believing fundamentalists these days, that are saying, well, it's not three distinct persons. But that, well, the term is modalism, different modes. The Father became the Son, it's the same person, and then the Son is the Holy Spirit in a different mode, God manifesting in different modes. Um, some teach something like, uh, well, just like we have spirit, soul, and body, then uh, God, the Father, is the soul, and then the Son is the body and the spirit is the spirit, but it's one person, it's not three persons. Now, the Bible's clear that there's one God, not three gods. But in the, in the Godhead, there are three persons. Now, there are people who will nitpick you and say, you can find a verse that refers to the Father as a person and the Son as a person, but not the Spirit. Well, the Bible said, grieve not the Spirit. That means he's a person, if he can be grieved. You know, just because it doesn't use the literal word person in reference to the Holy Ghost doesn't mean he's not a person when there are many things in the Bible that make it clear he is. Okay, so look in John chapter 10. I know there's a debate about this because I, I get asked this actually quite a bit. Uh, and um, so there are some... Preachers, I guess, online fighting about this. To me, it's a, the Godhead is beyond comprehension, but it's plainly stated in the Scripture, and it, it's a fundamental to faith in a basic Bible doctrine. Um, but that's the days we're living in, something as basic as the Trinity. Uh, people just don't seem to want to, I mean, they're just fighting and nitpicking over it, and... Um, Again, I don't. Somebody say, "Well, how can how can three be one?" Well, it's really not that hard when you think about it like this. You know, my family here on this second row, there's four plus me is five. We're five distinct persons, but we're one family, one family unit. There's one God in three persons. Okay, uh, but see, John 10 verse 30, Jesus said, "I and my Father are one." So he's one with the Father, but he's distinct from the Father. Look in chapter 14, John 14. Verse 7. Well, verse 6, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Um, so it's clear, he said, I and my Father are one, the Father is in him, but because he said, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father, some have said, that means he's the Father. No, it means the Father's in him. He's still distinct from the Father. Um... Back in chapter 1 of John, I think this is so clear. Verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. That's Jesus Christ, of course, because in verse number uh, 14 said, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And the Word was with God. And the word was God. Now, if, if it's all the same person, then how can he be with? Okay? He's with God. That means there's more than one person in the Godhead. 
and the Word was God. So he's with God, that's, that's the Trinity. But he is equally God with the Father and with the Spirit. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of verses. Uh, if he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. I mean, you see, so they're distinct. Um, look in uh, John 17. Of course, John emphasizes the deity of Christ. When Jesus prays to the Father, so is he praying to himself? No, he's praying to the Father, and what does he say to the Father in John 17, verse 5? And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. And of course, there's so many things. I mean, when, he, when Jesus was baptized, there he is, being baptized of John. The Father speaks from heaven, this is my beloved Son. The Spirit descends like a dove. All three members in the same place, they have to be distinct. They're not one person, they're three persons. Um, the Trinity is implied very plainly in the Old Testament, but it's clearly stated in the New Testament. I mean, 1 John 5, 7 says there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, these three are one. Three are one. And that's a great verse on the Trinity, and uh, that's why the devils try to get rid of it so much. I mean, most, most of your new versions don't even have that verse. But it belongs in there, absolutely. And there are many verses, not just 1 John 5, 7. There are many, and by the way, the Apostle Paul emphasizes the Trinity in the book of Ephesians. You find it all through Ephesians. For an example, how does he start off? All blessings and spiritual all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, right? And he says, from the, he talks about from the, from the Father, and then the Son, and then the Holy Ghost. In Ephesians 1, there's three sections there about our spiritual blessings. And he talks about from the Father, and he says, to the praise of His glory. From the Son, to the praise of His glory. From the Spirit, to the praise of His glory. Only God gets glory. So, the, so Paul's teaching that God is three in Ephesians 1. And he does it all through Ephesians, and so... Let me finish up this question with Isaiah 9, 6. You don't have to turn there. You're familiar. It's a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And so people will latch on to that and say it's the same person. Let, let me give you a little tip for Bible study. Always interpret the unclear in the light of the clear. But I actually heard a guy trying to defend his view that it's not three persons say if there's one or two verses that, make, that seem like it's saying he is the Father, then you've got to interpret the rest of the Bible in light of those one or two verses. He's got it backwards. You interpret the unclear in light of the clear, not the clear in light of the unclear. But I'll say this. He's the everlasting Father. Well, he is the everlasting Father of the nation Israel. He's the one that started the nation. <laughs> He's the father. Israel is my son, my, my firstborn. Who was it that spoke? That's what God said to tell Moses, tell Pharaoh. Now, who was it that appeared to Moses in the burning bush? It's Jesus Christ. He's the I am. Okay? The book of John makes it clear he's the I am. So, look, I know there are some things to it that are very deep. But the, the bottom line is the Bible is very clear. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Spirit is God. Uh, attributes of God are given to all three. Names and titles are given to all three. All three of them are called God in the Bible. And they have to be distinct because you see them working distinctly at the same time. And so there is one God in three persons. Jesus Christ is one with the Father, but He is not the Father as though there's not... Three persons. There are three persons in the Godhead.